I'm going to show you how to make a video at night, but not like this. This is infrared video, and I'm being illuminated by a pair of infrared floodlights similar to the five in this rack. This rack will let me illuminate an area about the size of a basketball half court. This is what I started with originally, but now I've got a better way. I use this. It's a digital single lens reflex camera. You don't need a very fancy one. I got this on eBay for $200. It's a Canon 300D and it's about 10 years old. It even came with a zoom lens. But I've replaced the lens with this 50 millimeter f1.4 lens from a Pentax 35 millimeter camera. I got this lens on eBay for $50 and an adapter for $10 to attach it to the camera. The original zoom lens was f5.6 and so this lens lets in about five times more light as the original lens. You'll also need one of these. It's an interval time. They're sometimes called timer remote. And they're about $30 on eBay. What I do is I set the camera to its maximum sensitivity, 1600 in this case. I set the aperture to its widest point and I take test exposure until I find a time exposure long enough to let the landscape be lit up like daylight using available starlight or moonlight. This is a Canon 5D Mark II. It has a sensitivity about eight times as much as this, which means that in the same amount of time, this sucks up eight times more light. It allows me to take shorter exposures. I've also equipped it with a telescopic lens, a 135 millimeter focal length f1.8. It also has a large external battery pack which powers the camera all night and again, the intervalometer. With such long lenses and large apertures, focus becomes critical. What I do is I aim the camera. I'll take some exposures to some exposures to determine the proper shutter speed and then I'll take some further exposures to help me refine the focus. I do this through multiple exposures. I'll take one exposure and then I'll look at it on the camera's LCD screen and evaluate the focus. This appears to be focused short of my subject, so I'm going to make a little bit of an adjustment, moving focus further away, and take another exposure. This is looking better, but I'm going to roll focus a little bit further away yet again, and take another picture. This one is looking better still. So I'll zoom in to the LCD image and pan around in it. And I think focus is still just a little bit short of the turtle. So what I'm going to do is make one more small adjustment to focus, take another picture, zoom in, look around, and now I think focus is pretty much right on the turtle. So I'm going to start the interval timer 
and it will have the camera take one picture after another that the computer will then put together into a time-lapse movie. With this, I can see clear to the horizon. I can see in color. I see the green of the plants, the brown of the beach. I see people almost a mile away. That big crowd of people is on a turtle walk and they're observing sea turtles nesting on the beach. I have to give credit to Tom Lowe for giving me the idea for this. I saw his short time-lapse film online called Learning to Fly. It had beautiful video of the Milky Way and stars and the landscape lit up like day by starlight and moonlight. As soon as I saw that, I knew that this was the way to study these sea turtles. Since then, I've used the technique to record some unusual turtle behavior, such as this one, which can't seem to decide where it wants to dig its hole. Researchers have occasionally observed this behavior, but usually only know it from tracks that they see on the beach in the morning. This is a legend. As far as I know, it's never been filmed before. This is another legend. This turtle is deterred by a small cliff in the sand. And unable to nest normally, it lays its eggs in the surf. Researchers occasionally find turtle eggs kicking around in the surf in the morning, but none of the ones that I've talked to have ever observed this behavior themselves. As far as I know, this is the first time that this behavior has ever been recorded on film. This is another turtle deterred by the sand cliff, digs an entire nest in the surf zone. This nest will be washed out by the waves and again the eggs will be kicking around in the surf in the morning. This turtle, after finishing nesting, returns to the sea and then climbs ashore again to check on the nest. We decided to use the technique to study this behavior. It's called false crawl. It's when turtles climb the beach and then return to the sea without nesting. In the process, we discovered many of these events in which turtles never leave the surf zone and so never leave tracks on the beach for sea turtle researchers to find. We call this a failure to crawl. We found that these failure to crawl events actually outnumber false crawls and successful nestings combined. 